Hey guys, how are you? We are going to do some work here on some watercolor. Um, as of yet, I don't know what I'm gonna name this, but I'm assuming if you're watching this, then you already know, because it's in the title. I did one of these recently where the one here on YouTube was a uh, speed through for the most part, and the tutorial was over on Patreon. This one's gonna be a full tutorial. It's not gonna be a heavy in-depth tutorial, but it will be a full tutorial. So we're gonna do something quick and simple. I'm going to start with colored pencil, and I'm just looking for a color. Maybe do I want to do pink? Maybe I have these mechanical colored pencils that I got on Amazon. They're by Pilot, and they're called Color Eno. Um, I think I'm going to do pink. I think we'll do pink. We're going to just do some simple flower shapes, nothing complicated. Um, so we're mixed media artists, right? So. That means that I'm not a watercolor purist, so if I want to use pencil or gel pen or something else with my watercolors, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do an initial sort of just quick sketchy thing. Here with the colored pencil, I'm just making some round shapes. I have taped off the edges of my journal just because I'm really enjoying right now um, having sort of crisp edges to my paintings for the most part. I don't know if it's necessary for this particular one, but I had the tape, it was out, so we're going to use it. All right, so we've got our, our simple shapes there. Can you see that? All right. We're going to start with, I think this time, I'm going to start with a round brush. And always I always start lighter and work my way darker. Um, I think I'm going to start with Holbein's Permanent Yellow Orange, which in this palette is the only orange in the palette. And this is my Floral and Cobalt palette. These are the colors in the... Oh, you can't see that. Hang on. Let's move this all down a little bit. There we go. These are the colors in that palette. If you want to take a screenshot right about here. I'm going to figure out where my sun is coming from. Maybe there because my studio studio light is that way. So maybe I'll choose that it's coming from that way, which it kind of is anyway. And I'm going to put the orange on the flower tips or bud tip, whatever these are. I don't know what these are. Then we'll grab some water after we get some paint on there. Blend out our inner edges a little bit. Spread the paint around. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with a light green. So I have this light Jane Davenport green. It's a limey green, it's called Jiminy. And I wanna make it a little bit lighter and less pigmented, so I'm gonna add some water. And we'll do the same thing to our leaves. I'm not concerned about the pencil lines staying on the page. I think things like that add interest to your work. Um, and interesting marks to your work, especially in something like this watercolor journal. So don't be afraid to leave your pencil lines, leave your marks, and let them add to the voice of your finished work. Okay, that's pretty good, I like that. I do have a dryer here handy off that way in case I need to, I wanna dry things between layers and I don't want colors to blend together too much. Um, right now I'm not feeling the need to do that, but you never know. I'm gonna go into it, the darkest red here. It's called Frida. It's like a pinky red, but it's pretty dark. My water is getting really dirty. This is like my third watercolor tutorial today. All right, I'm gonna add this to the bottom. Mm 
then we're going to do as we did before and we're going to add some water. It's going to blend up into the orange because the orange for the most part is still wet, which I'm okay with. And where I need it, I will add some more of the red. Oh, it's such, such a pretty color. I'm working wet on wet in these little flowers so the colors bleed. Some of the pigment will stay where I put it, but some of it's gonna blend up into the other colors, which is what I want. Okay. I'm gonna do that, something similar with the leaves and the stems. So um, I am going to, and I might need to add my light green back now because if I turn my head a little bit, some of it's dry, but that's okay. Um, we are going to start with, there's a cobalt green here, which is pretty dark. Might not be dark enough, but I have a darker green. Sorry about all the background noise. My daughter is um, also working from home and I think she's trying to let the dog out. I'm gonna try to stay away from the orange because I don't want the green to go into the orange, which is a little bit tricky. I could dry it and make my life easier, but you know. Okay, so we're gonna go back with some water. Putting the water where you want the paint to go. Don't put the water into that orange because you don't want the paint to go there. I'm barely touching the paper with my brush, using just the very tip. get too much on there, I can wash my brush off and lift. Okay, I have a darker green here, which is Jan, Jane Davenport Water Spirit. It's a dark olivey green. I'm gonna mix it with some of the other, with all of the other greens here. I don't know if it's even dark enough. I might wanna add some blue to it. I think I'm gonna add some of the Jane Davenport ink to it, which is a dark navy blue. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Again, I'm just barely touching. Okay, my battery cut out there, so I don't know what you saw, but I added our cobalt green and then blended it out with some water. Then I took the Jane Davenport Water Spirit and added some of the ink to it, the dark navy blue. And now I'm gonna just go in and very lightly with the tip of the brush, just add some deeper green shadows. Again, keeping the um, greens away from any of the oranges or reds that are wet because I don't want them to go there. That's actually pretty good. I like that. I might want to add a pop of just that navy color. So let's try that. Yeah. This is the straight navy, the Jane Davenport ink.
just make it pop. Taking a wet brush um, with no paint on it and blotting up some of the excess paint and or blending out some places where there's too much pigment. It's all about layering and putting the right colors in the right place and suggest to suggest your shapes. I like that. All right, um, I'm gonna dry this. Okay, I'm gonna take a blue, and there's a fan brush in here somewhere. There it is. Uh, let's do Jane Davenport's mermaid color. Which is a tealy green blue. Add a bunch of water to it. It's not so bright. And then we're gonna just Okay, any place that you got paint that you don't want it, just quickly go in and just blot it up with a rag. A Mr. Clean Magic Eraser works really well, by the way. All right, dry that. Okay, take the tape off. Which I didn't really need the tape because we didn't have like, we weren't doing a skyscape or anything, but it's nice to do, I think. It keeps things a little bit contained. Oops. And I'm going to take that same pink pen that we started with and right under here, I'm gonna give it a title, let's see. And then sign it. I think I did one earlier today, I signed it 2019. I did, so that's wrong. Oops. All right, anyway, and I don't think I can erase that. Let's see, I doubt it. Oh yeah. Okay, let's fix that. There we go. <laughs> Helps if I put the right date on things. Anyway, there we go, there, there you have it. There is a watercolor, quick little watercolor painting. That would be a cute little painting to put on the front of a card or anything. Um, I hope that you all have, if you're enjoying the watercolor tutorials, that you have some sort of a journal like this that you just can do some watercolor play in. This, for those that are gonna ask me, because I know somebody is gonna ask me, this is a moleskin, I think. Yep, it's a moleskin. Yeah, that's a moleskin watercolor journal. Um, I don't remember what size it is. Let's see. It's like eight by five. So five by eight inch water, watercolor moleskin journal. So anyway, there you have it. I hope that's something that you can get something out of, that you enjoy watching the video and playing with your own paints. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups that I'm in, um, there's a lot of ways you can do that, including Patreon, where you get free content and stuff that you don't get here, um, shopping in my Etsy shop, um, 
shopping in uh, with my Amazon affiliate link or donating money to my PayPal tip jar. All of the links for those and a whole bunch of other stuff are in the description below. The most important thing, of course, is to go out, besides like, share, and subscribe, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.